So lenses definitely do play a much bigger role in creating the images that you want. You can have a really expensive camera but the wrong lens and you can get crappy photos but in the opposite way, you can also have a relatively affordable camera but the right lens and you will get really good images. And so in today's video, I want to talk about five of my favorite uh, Canon EF lenses and why I choose them. The one thing that I hope you guys take from this is that to understand how to choose lenses and why you choose lenses. It's not just because some guy on, the, on YouTube told you that this is the best lens. There are best lenses for every different kinds of scenarios, but there is no one lens that really fits everything. And I have these specific lenses and I choose these specific lenses because they fit a specific need uh, that I want. Also, this list isn't an arbitrary list. I didn't just pick up these lenses like a week ago and say like, oh, this is my favorite lens. Oh, this is the best lens ever. <laughs> But I have been using these lenses at minimum for a year so I feel like I do have a lot of insight as to why I choose these lenses and why these are good lenses. Uh, so let's not waste any more time and let's jump into the first lens and the first lens might be a little bit of a shock to you guys and that is the EF 24-105 f4 version 2. So in my opinion, every photographer should have a multi-purpose all-in-one zoom lens. And for me, I chose this one, number one, because it came in my 5D Mark IV. And I love the range. I can go wide and I can punch in a little bit uh, to 105 and that gets me a little bit close up. Uh, I understand also Canon does make the 24-70 f2.8 uh, version 2. And while that lens is amazing, really sharp, uh, for me, the reason why I choose these multi-purpose lenses is really the versatility of it, being able to go wide and close up. Uh, I rather have the 105 versus the extra stop of light that the 2.8 gives me, uh, and because and the reason for that is because I use the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark III that has really good low light capabilities, so I can compensate for that lack of one stop with high ISOs, and also really f2.8 doesn't really cut it that much for my kind of work style. Uh, and that's why you know that 2.8 to f4 is kind of negligible and the other thing that a lot of people say is that oh, you can't get a lot of shallow depth of field yes that's true uh, but if you know what you're doing you can get shallow depth of field however you don't buy a lens like this to get shallow depth of field i use other lenses i have specific lenses that fit that need but really this lens uh, versus the version one is way sharper uh, the IS is much better and the design looks much nicer as well. The, uh, the version 1 was a little bit ugly for my taste. Uh, however, I want to say that the RF version of this 24-105 is an amazing lens. I think it has 5 stops of image stabilization. Uh, it's way smaller, it's lighter, much sharper. Uh, so you, if you have an RF camera, I think I would go for that lens uh, specifically. But yeah, 24-105, great workhorse. I use this for a lot of like corporate boring shoots that don't really need too creative uh, look for it for example like a corporate event or just taking photos that you just need photos where they don't need to look like super interesting and that's where this lens comes in and the second lens that I have on this list is this. This is the Canon EF 16-35 f4 IS. Following the trend of the 24-105, I have also an f4. And the reason why uh, I have an ultra-wide-angle lens is something that I think every professional photographer should have, is that the ultra-wide-angle look does give you a lot more different options versus the max on the 24. 16mm uh, to 20mm is a sweet spot really for a lot of like architecture stuff, uh, interior shoots that I do as well as some group photos. Uh, the reason why I chose the F4 is number one, IS for video. Uh, I do a lot of handheld work, so that's great. And once again, as I mentioned, the same thing with the 24 to 105. I have high ISO capability cameras, so I don't really worry about like that extra stop of light. Um, but the one thing that, that's amazing about this is because of how small and light it is compared to the 2.8 version. Uh, the version 3, which is an amazing lens, the 16 to 35 F2.8. However, it's way more pricier. Uh, and it's heavier and bigger and it takes an 82mm filter thread which is a little bit uh, not really that helpful because most of my lenses are at max 70, 77 so it, it helps to just keep it within that range and also another thing when you're on wider angle lenses it's harder to get shallow depth of field no matter how hard you try ultra wide angle lenses even if you have a 2.8 you shoot at 16 mil you're not going to get shallow depth of field but i will say one thing is that when you shoot on 35 mil uh, which is one of the plus sides of having a lens like this is that you have ultra wide angle you have an ultra wide angle as well as a relatively uh, normal focal length at 35 
Uh, the F4 just doesn't really cut it in most situations. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't I would use it that much at 35. I usually keep it at 16 or at 20 mil around that ultra wide angle look because it gives me a uh, really good sharpness. Uh, it gives me really good clarity. Not so much vignetting wide open. There is, uh, but it's not as bad as you would imagine. And the eyes on this is fantastic. So overall, I think this is one of Canon's best value uh, ultra wide angle lenses. My third favorite lens is more of a specialist lens, but in a lot of ways I can use it for multiple different situations and that is the Canon EF macro 100mm f2.8 uh, IS. This lens is an incredible lens. I use it for almost everything that I shoot for, especially when it comes to products and food. And really, I use this as a short telephoto lens as well. You know, a lot of people think that this is just a macro lens. And while it is a macro lens, first and foremost in its use case, uh, but it's a lot more than that. You can even shoot, you can sh always shoot portraits with this lens at 100 mil and at f2.8. It does give you nice subject separation. This lens is sharp, it is light. It's really, really easy to put on my bag in case I don't want to bring like a 70 to 200 but I still want a telephoto look. I do want to say one thing is that the IS on this lens isn't that great. It uses like this hybrid IS something that I have no idea what it is. I think it's like kind of like floating element inside uh, but the IS in this has kind of like been a little bit wonky for me especially when I'm shooting video. It, it does give sometimes jitters or sometimes like just artifacts in the video. I, I, I'm not so sure if I have any examples to show you uh, but usually I don't shoot IS on this lens that much even for video uh, I when I shoot with this lens I will usually stabilize it with either a gimbal a monopod or just really uh, make sure I'm properly using it I won't use IS on this and another thing also is this lens is pretty noisy if you hear it close uh, even if you're the eyes is on uh, disengaged when you listen to it closely you can actually hear the motors in the lens working which I'm not a huge fan of I have sent this to Canon a couple of times uh, but they said that there's nothing wrong with the lens so I think it's just uh, the lens itself but uh, besides that this lens is fantastic I mean like it's it's one of those lenses where I think for the money that you're getting used if you can get this lens used uh, it's a great value because it's not just a macro lens it's a portrait lens it's a telephoto lens and if you're looking for a medium range shot telephoto uh, as well as having a macro capability I mean you can't really go wrong especially with this lens now my fourth lens is a lens that I think every pro photographer should have it's not even a question uh, you must must have this lens this is the 70 to 200 the f 2.8 version 3. Now you don't need to have this lens particularly but a 70 to 200 is a focal length as a lens that you should have in your bag because the kind of images that it gives you the kind of images that it renders is so what I would call professionally clean it's a very clean minimal look especially when you can blur out the background you can isolate the background at 200 uh, and it's honestly quite a flexible lens you know with 70 to 200 a range that is pretty easy to work with I shot pretty much everything with it portraits food uh, a little bit of interior I shot videos I have shot so many different kinds of genres of photography uh, with this lens alone and really it just goes to show how versatile this lens is I do have a review of this lens the link is in the description or somewhere up here uh, and another thing is if you're a little bit strapped for cash I would suggest going for the version 2 but if you can the version 3 is much better uh, in my opinion the sharpness and overall quality of the images coming out from the version 3 are much nicer uh, it doesn't flare as much as the version 2 and the micro contrast on this is amazing um, but you won't go wrong with the version 2 but if you can find this lens use the version 3 right now since the RF 70 to 200 has come out the price has dropped on this lens it gives you another reason to not not own this lens it's really affordable at its price now don't buy new uh, buy used and you can get really really tremendous value out of this I have shot even this uh, handheld video at 200 and it gives me amazing images and that's why I really really love this 70 to 200 and of course the last lens uh, if you follow this channel long enough you follow me on Instagram it's my favorite lens I bring this lens literally everywhere I go uh, I don't even think about whether I want to bring it I will put it in my bag for every single shoot that I go to and the lens is shooting me right now it's the EF 35mm f1.4 version 2 this lens in my opinion is the perfect lens the 35mm focal length with the f4 uh, plus the sharpness the overall micro contrast the build quality the size the weight everything about this 
this lens is just fantastic. It's just everything I am personally looking for that fits my style. The AF in this is extremely fast, it's blazing fast, uh, very, very accurate images, and it's extremely sharp, wide open, even at 1.4. And this lens, I think, came out in 2016, so it's about five years right now. Uh, and it still holds up pretty well uh, for its time, you know. I understand that there are cheaper versions of this lens, but in my opinion, this lens, while pricey, it's well worth the money because of one thing and that is the reliability of this lens. This lens has never failed me. I've dropped it many, many, many times, uh, but it has never failed on me. And I think I enjoy this lens the most is obviously the 35mm focal length at 1.4. I can really blow out the background if I need to, shoot wide open, shoot wide open in the dark. And then I think the 35mm, in my opinion, is the best focal length for any photographer to have because it's the most natural, most contextual image. For me, I see the world right now in 35mm. Even before I put up the, the camera to my eye, I can already tell how the image is going to look like because I'm so used to shooting with this lens and I love this lens to bits. If I could have only one lens, throw away everything else, this would be the lens I would take. So yeah, those are my top five lenses. Uh, obviously, I do have other lenses as well, but those are more specialist use cases. Uh, these lenses, I know as long as I got these five lenses, I'll be able to handle any shoot. The thing is, is that I don't bring all these five lenses to every shoot that I go for. Really, I understand the brief, what we want to shoot, and then I pick usually two or three lenses from, from, from this uh, from this set and I bring it to the shoot and I've never once said like, oh, I wish I brought this lens. Oh, I wish I brought this lens. And most importantly, like once I said at the beginning, is understanding why you choose these lenses versus somebody saying, oh, this is the best lens ever. Once again, every situation is going to be different. For me, the perfect focal length is this 35 mil, but for you, it could be a 50 mil, it could be an 85, it could be many things. And you have to really understand that each lens gives a specific use case. It gives you a specific, uh, it solves a specific problem for you as a photographer and it's more important for you to understand how to choose lenses versus which lens is the best. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I would love to know what your top five lenses are. Are they EF lenses, RF lenses? In my opinion, RF lenses are one of the best lenses uh, you can buy right now. And I know these are EF lenses. Um, and the reason why I don't really have any RF lenses is really for another video. So if you're interested in that, do let me know. If you have any topics that you'd like me to cover in photography, do let me know I'll be more than happy to do them thank you guys so much for watching once again and I will see you in the next one